I've just been sitting out here on this beautiful day and I've just been thinking. I started the book of Genesis again, reading through chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Finish the Bible again. It's time to go back through because every time I go through, I see something I didn't see before. And God speaks to me in amazing ways right on time. But interestingly, I've always wondered, is a tomato a fruit or a vegetable? Now, I know there's all kinds of arguments here. I've heard them all. I have my thoughts. But I've always kind of wondered things like an avocado. Is it fruit or a vegetable? How about corn? Fruit or a vegetable, right? We have these questions. But did you know that in the first chapter of Genesis, the argument is settled? As we're going through God's creation, in the first two chapters, in the first chapter, it lines out how, where, and how, and when, what order everything was created by God. And then in the second chapter, there's a little bit of uh, fine-tuning, a little bit more detail and some things in there that are really important. But, but God told us how he did all this. He's, he has defined everything that's really important. Check this out. Chapter 1, verse 11. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And so it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And so the evening and the morning were the third day. Did you catch it? That vegetables have seeds that they yield seeds but fruits have the seeds inside them it says it says the herbs that yield seed and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind whose seed is in itself it's right here there's no argument if it has the seeds on the inside it's a fruit. If the seeds are on the outside, or if it is a seed, it's a vegetable. There's, there's, there's no argument here. God told us the truth. Now, we can have this fun part. We can have this fun debate about this, but it's written here. God told us what it is. But we have to be real careful because God also defines some other things in the Bible that are really, really important. I'm tremendously grieved by the things that I'm watching in our nation and in the world. The evil little doctor came back and he said yesterday, he had the audacity to say that, that his decision shouldn't have to be questioned by a court. We have a judicial branch, executive branch, and a legislative branch who bring a balance of power so that we can live in a place where no one is, becomes tyrannical. It doesn't become totalitarian. So that guy who thinks he's got all the knowledge and I don't, you can't trust him as far as you can throw him, he says that the court shouldn't be involved. How, how about that old president who just showed up and said that free speech, he completely murdered the Constitution of the United States in the definition of free speech. Or, or what it means to stand in the square and voice your opinions about things. When it becomes one narrative, which is very quickly happening, we got some problems. Definitions are important. And our nation is starting to change and blur the lines of definitions. Did you know... That in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, it says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. 
He made men and women in his image. And then he said, the two of you go and multiply. Okay, so I don't have to take you through a biology lesson to tell you that you need a man and a woman to make a baby to multiply on the earth. God made the car. So he made them male and female. There isn't other things. There's no changes. There's no other definitions. The truth of what a fruit or a vegetable is, is also the truth listed here on what gender is. And the minute we walk away from God's truth, we've got a problem. Because secular moralism says we can make up any truth we want. Remember Psalm chapter 2, where we, we're, we're breaking the bonds. The kings of the earth came up against the Lord and his anointed, saying, let's break the bonds. Let's, let's cast them far from us. <laughs> what, what that means is, is God's word, let's just, Let's just get rid of it. Let's blur the lines and make up our own truths. We don't need him. We don't need God. Remember, Satan said, did God really say? And he's been saying that now for decades. Our whole nation has been sucked under the sway of this question. And did God really say? No, you can do anything you want. Well, he's God not only defined what the difference between fruits and vegetables... He defined the difference between men and women. Did you know he also defined marriage? It's right in chapter 2, verse 24. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. That's marriage. And look what 25 says. Just to knock it home, it says, And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. It's not same-sex words, not same-sex marriage, it's not make it up, it's not with an animal, it's not with anything else. One man, one woman, one lifetime. Now, divorce, I've been through a divorce, I, I understand how that is. I'm, I'm guilty of adultery in my past, yeah. Not adultery, I'm sorry, a, a fornication, sex outside of marriage, yeah. But... When we get into this idea that anybody can marry anybody, you've blurred the lines of the truth. And that doesn't come without consequences. It doesn't come without consequences, without checks and balances. How about, how about the definition, how about the definition of life itself? We have this tremendous problem with abortion in this nation and in this world now. And people are fighting tooth and nail to make this a deal, to make it a problem. What does God say about life? Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4 says, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you to a prophet to the nations. God's telling jo, uh, Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, that he was ordained a, a prophet. He knew who he was before he was even conceived. And then when he's conceived, he, he's alive inside his mother's womb. He's alive. He's a person. God had a reason for him. He had ordained him and sanctified him and set him aside. Same kind of thing David's writing in Psalm 139. It says in 139.13, it says, For you formed my inward parts, you covered me in my mother's womb. I'll praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and my soul knows very well. My frame was hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book, they all were written, the days fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them. He's saying, you knew me before I was born. You knew how many days I was going to live and how I was going to die and how long my life was going to be. You knew all about me before I was born. Life starts at conception in God's economy. So abortion is murder. So in California with AB, this this new thing they voted in that says that 
if it passes, if it gets officially passed, you can kill a baby up to 30 days after birth. And it sounds like the coroner is not allowed to investigate it. So you can take it home and smother it at your house and the coroner can't look into the investigation. It's just a dead baby because you didn't want it and it's okay and you can get rid of them. Seriously? How decrepit we are. How decrepit we are. How hurtful we are. There's great, great, there was great wickedness on the earth before God brought the flood. There was great wickedness because the angels in heaven, some of the angels, decided not to follow God's rule, not to follow God's truth. He had created them and used them and made them a certain way, and they... They blurred the lines of what they were asked to do and they came down and they had sexual relations with humans and then they messed with the genetic line. Let me, let me make a point. With all of the genetic stuff going on today, CRISPR, genetic modifying, genetic therapy. If you change your genetic makeup enough, you're no longer a human. And Jesus died for humans. This may have some traction because it says in Revelation that if you take the mark of the beast, you can't be saved. You cannot be saved. Which means that that's not just some, some random sin. There must be a reason. And maybe it's a mandated medical procedure that has genetic therapy and genetic changes involved in it. Am I saying it's, it is the mark of the beast now? No, it can't be the mark of the beast until there's a beast. And the beast can't come until the church is gone. These are all things down the line. But Jesus said it in the days of Noah, I would come back. Boy, does it seem like it feels like we're sitting in the days of Noah now. I was reading in Proverbs today. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 23 says, Buy the truth and do not sell it. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. And although I've probably read that a dozen times probably, I, I never caught my eye before until today and I've been chewing on it all day long. What the heck does that mean? Buy the truth. <sighs> this is the truth. The truth of God. In a time when everything else changes in the moment. Now you can... Now, how do you know what the truth is when the truth... When the other side of the truth so that you can determine what the truth is is being censored. So you're not hearing it. And you have people in high places trying to censor the, the town square so that you're getting only the state-sponsored message. How do you know what the truth is? How do you know what to do for your family when, when the doctors that have all the knowledge who created any of this kind of stuff is being censored so that you only get the state-sponsored knowledge? It's changing all the time. It moves the goalposts. You don't know what it is except this book tells me why it's happening. It, he even tells me, don't be deceived, that there's going to be deception everywhere and that you can't be deceived. Don't let yourself be deceived. Understand that all this stuff has an end and that ending is in the Bible. Buy the truth. 
The truth is narrow. Jesus came in grace and truth. That means he came to give you grace because of your sins, but he also brought the truth which you have to understand and live by. You can't just come down here, say a prayer, become saved, and, and live your life any way you want. You can't. You have to live in the truth. That's what it means to buy the truth. It's going to cost you something. It may cost you friends. It may cost you your job. It may cost you the debauchery you live your life in, the things that make you happy, the drinking that you love, the drugs that you take, whatever it is, the relationships you seek after, whatever it is that the flesh wants, it will cost you something. It might cost you time. It might cost you studying time. It may cost you TV time. Maybe you can't binge watch whatever it is you watch because you have to, you got to read. You, you have to study to understand, to buy the truth and to buy wisdom and to buy instruction and to buy understanding. These four, these four things are incredibly crucial right now to discern what's going on. What does it mean to sell it? Don't sell it. Don't sell it. Don't take the wisdom and knowledge and understanding that you've put in here, you understand, and trade it for something else. You'll become a fool. Live your life seeking after and continuing to build on this truth. And don't give it away. Interestingly, in verse 7 of the same chapter, Proverbs 23, verse 7, it says, For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. That the cares and concerns of this life come out of the heart. The heart, the, guard your heart with all due diligence, with all diligence for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Who we are comes out of our heart. You can't hide it. You can't, you can't fake it. And Hebrews tells us that everyone is naked and open before the one who has to give judgment. See, these angels in Genesis chapter 3 came down because God told them to be angels and they decided that they needed to go do something else. Now, it's quite possible that they were drawn down by Satan in an effort to dilute and gen to d destroy the genetic makeup of the Jewish people and of the human race so that the Messiah couldn't come and Satan would win. <laughs> Jude tells us a little bit more about that. But listen to what Jude has to say here. It says, but uh, Jude, Jude only has one chapter, verse 5. But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but their, left their own abode, he is reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. Now listen. They sinned against God and God put them in chains, waiting for judgment day. We're sti we still wait for judgment day. The only difference between us and angels are is he, we're his crown jewel and he's given us grace and given us patience and time to come and make it right before he sends us to here. This is a day, th those who do not accept Jesus, this is a place that they will no doubt go. He is reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great city or the great day. That's the day of the Lord, judgment day. Verse 7, as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh. Sexual immorality, actions of going after the wrong flesh. Remember what we said. Made men and women. Male and female, he made them. And then he ordered them to go and multiply, which means a, a male and a female have to get together. Anything else outside is outside the truth. Buy the truth. And don't sell it. He's saying anybody going after strange flesh, that would be flesh that's not God's ordained flesh for you. having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh or set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Those people will be thrown into the fire. 
And Jude tells me down here, it says, And some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Look, I, I need to make a point. I don't hate people. God loves all people, regardless of your sins. But he can't handle the sins. And you need to change and repent and walk away from the sins. He will save you. And all of this, whatever it is that you believe is okay now. See, you're, you see, you're selling the truth for what's going on in this planet. It gives you some pleasure now, but you're failing to see the bigger picture of eternity later. The Bible in the truth, the narrow way, Jesus is the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The way is narrow. The answer is narrow. The truth is narrow. It's narrow. It's narrow. Two plus two is four. It can't be any other number. And if you change it slightly, 2.1 plus two is two point, It's 4.1. It's one answer. There's one answer. No other number can be the answer to that number, to that mathematical equation. The truth is narrow. By the truth and wisdom and understanding and instruction. And don't sell it. Don't give away what you know in this Bible to be true. The truth that you work so hard to understand, that the morality being made in God's image is in your heart, that this morality is, is, is in there. To, don't, let, don't let your conscience be seared like a hot iron and make sure you don't trade it for the cares and concerns of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. It will pull you away. And it will trap you in bondage. And then at some point, in some time, you'll be ending up sitting there with these angels waiting in darkness for the day of judgment. Some things I was talking, things I was thinking about today. Tomatoes are fruit. God says so. But God decided, but God also very narrowly defines gender and marriage and the start of life and it tells us very clearly what's going to happen in the end days and proverbs 23 23 says buy the truth get as much of it as you can it's going to cost you something but it's worth it in the long run because eternity is around the corner and the cares and the concerns and the fleeting of whatever you believe is most important here, I promise you, is not. I will close with Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Colossians 3, verse 1 says this. If then you were raised with Christ, if you're a believer in Christ, that you have given your life over, that the Spirit has come into you and He has saved you. If you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. There is a there is a unveiling of the children of God. That unveiling is being waited for by even creation itself as it groans under our sinfulness. But he's saying if you're raised in Christ, don't worry about the stuff that's here. Clean your life of its sins and get the knowledge you need. Does it mean we're going to be perfect? No, not at all. But it means that the Spirit will help us to turn away from our bondages, or to, to turn away from our habitual sins, so that we could be more like Christ, and that we could be saved for the day, and we can, we can avoid the day of judgment because Jesus died. He took that judgment upon himself. But you have to live a life that is dedicated to him. And I promise you it will be the best decision you've ever made. Buy the truth. It'll cost you something. And don't trade it for anything in the world. 
Just some thoughts for today. I'm going to go have a tomato. <laughs> Be blessed.